Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take our attention and focus it towards this mighty Constellation Phoenix, the Mark IV variant of Constellation, the upper echelon of Constellations. This ship is luxurious but still maintains a formidable array of weapon systems and has more than enough ability to dish out some serious DPS. The Constellation Phoenix is a multi-crew luxury spacecraft manufactured by Robert Space Industries. As the luxury variant of the Constellation series, it is primarily used to facilitate elite tourism and VIP transport. Its amenities include two single bedrooms, a master bedroom, a full bar, a dining area and a hot tub. It also features a sensor dampened cargo area. The Phoenix comes stock with a Lynx Rover and a snub fighter, which is the P 72 Archimedes. Now, both um, the Merlin and the Archimedes will dock to this ship, which is really cool. You also get an Ursa Rover with this ship um, until the Lynx Rover is built and playable in game. Um, so, that is something really cool. So, you're getting two vehicles along with the Phoenix with all that luxury and DPS. So, that's pretty amazing. Now, in the future, we should be getting these really cool VIP taxi sort of missions where we can carry passengers from one part of the verse to another part of the verse and make money that way. So comfort, luxury, all that good stuff. You'll get a better score for a smooth ride. I think that's sort of how it's going to work, which sounds tedious, but I actually think it'll be a very relaxing way to play the game. So some of the features found on board the Phoenix um, will tailor to that Pacific game loop. So let's go over some of the features that the ship actually has with the taxi and VIP missions in mind. Features. Relaxation. Comes with a luxury master bedroom and two guest rooms. Entertainment. Touting opulent touches like a full bar, dining area and even a hot tub. Point defense system. AI controlled turrets thanks to dedicated onboard computer blades. This makes them effective at neutralizing incoming fast threats like missiles or torpedoes. RSI Lynx Rover comes with the luxury rover which can be carried inside the cargo hold. Snub Fighter comes with the close ranged fighter P 72 Archimedes, which has docking capability with the Phoenix. It is also compatible with the P 52 Merlin. So those are some pretty impressive features um, to be found on board the Phoenix. Now I am a little bit biased towards the Constellations. Um, they were the biggest ship that I bought with real money. In fact, it was the Taurus, I think, and I loved that thing to death. And I still do. Sitting in the cockpit of any Constellation is always pleasant. It does attach itself very well to the nostalgic feelings of have of playing this game for the first time. Um, so they are popular in general constellations throughout the verse. We'll see how effective the VIP taxi missions are and just how much money we can make from them. Um, I imagine it'll be quite a lot and I know Origin are sort of the go-to luxury manufacturer but I really do think the Phoenix can hold its own because internally it's a lovely lovely ship. Although this is the luxury variant of Constellation, we still get that classic design with the engines. We still get the potent firepower located on the nacelles in and around the rear of the ship. So we haven't lost that classic Constellation look and feel along with that devastating firepower. Um, the ship just looks great. Um, the Constellation, I think, is timeless. Uh, I don't think people would want it to change too much. The nacelles, the Vito engines, the Phoenix has it all like you would expect from its cousins. So you still get the Vito with that really cool LED lights to help in atmosphere. It is quite sluggish in atmosphere, but then that would be due to its size. But those VTOLs almost certainly are a welcome feature. And not to mention they look awesome when you deploy them. So Still a lot of character from the Constellation Phoenix. Hasn't lost any of its touches in terms of its layout. As you can see here, we still have the pilot, forward stroke captain, slapped right bang in the middle here, taking control with room for two co-pilots. Um, so more than enough space in here. It's always been really nicely laid out. And as I said, 
the cockpit for me is very nostalgic regardless of what constellation I'm sitting in. Despite this ship being a luxury variant, there's still plenty of things we can do with this thanks to its classic constellation design. You know, we can still run cargo, we can still go bunker busting, we can carry vehicles, we can go exploring, we can go bounty hunting. There's plenty of things that can still be done using the Phoenix and you get to do it all in just pure luxury so that's very nice um, also the Archimedes snub fighter as you see here is a very nice thing to fly around in these snub fighters are bags and bags of fun um, they sort of act as mini escort exploration forward stroke fighters deterrent ships and it's kind of nice to have them docked nicely tucked away at the rear of the Phoenix and the other Constellation variants um, but you can swap that out for the Merlins too so the Merlins will fit in the back of this ship and as you can see it tucks away nicely and this thing has some pretty big engines for its size and they are bags of fun to fly around. In terms of weaponry then well the Phoenix isn't exactly lackluster in that department either as you can see here we have these really cool I'm gonna call them missile arms and a fold in and out whenever you're ready to deploy them. Now the Phoenix will get 28 missiles on board which is pretty phenomenal. That's a lot of missiles and when you compare it to something like uh, the Freelancer Miz has the same amount of missiles and this is a luxury ship punching out 28 missiles that's fairly impressive and they do look awesome in flight as you can see here. What a sight to behold is when you see a Phoenix or any constellation in fact deploying missiles at this rapid rate it's a very nice touch um, the animation is really cool the lighting from the missiles is also just epic they leave this sort of blurry trail um, as you dispatch your foes so taking on a phoenix is not going to be an easy task because constellations uh, are typically very well armed very well defended as well the shields are no pushovers they are fairly tanky so your vips and your passengers, as you're trying to transport them to and from their destination, are going to have the luxury and protection needed, especially with a snub fighter on board as well. So taking down the Phoenix is going to be quite a challenge in itself, I think. It's very well designed. The Phoenix, as I said, shares all of the DNA from its cousins and it certainly packs a punch. So let's briefly discuss how it looks and why it's so appealing to many. I think it has a sort of retro look to it. It is dripping in right angles. It looks sci-fi. It belongs in the verse. And of course, it's an old ship. Uh, but it's a proven ship. And it's endeared its way into many hearts of players throughout the years, I imagine. Um, most people don't really understand it until they get in a constellation and then once you're in you kind of just get this vibe that this is an awesome ship and it makes the game very enjoyable at least it did for me my first experience with the constellations they do look superb very intricate landing gear system it, they can be tricky to land um, sometimes you might nose over and accidentally bash the cockpit if you're not careful um, but we'll gloss over that. Apart from that, it is a kind of retro looking ship, but it does look amazing and it still holds up well. And I think its design, the way it looks, will carry on for a long time. Maybe in the future they might wish to update it to bring it up to speed because they've been doing that with other ships throughout the verse. So that is a possibility, but I think classically it's an excellent looking ship and the design is awesome. Right, let's now take a look at the onboard components and weapons and all of that good stuff. Okay, let's take a look at what we can find on a Phoenix, which is stock. Now, there's a lot to digest in terms of firepower and components and missiles but we'll dive right in and jump in the deep end now if you wanted to try this ship you can rent it that's awesome you can rent it for seven days as well and you can also buy it in game so you can see we've got four size four omni skis here um you could leave these gimbaled if you're worried about getting into a pvp situation but if you wanted four size fives that is also an option for you so that is a ridiculous amount of dps for the pilot to fire um, I would probably just leave these 
as cannons to be honest. Ballistics are amazing, I just don't like the hassle of constantly going to rearm, it kind of ruins the um, flow of my gameplay so to speak. Uh, we have the upper turret and lower turret, these are both equipped with badges and then we have 28 missiles, these are size 1 marksmen. Um, now you may wish to pick and choose your missile racks and what size missiles you want. I kind of like um, the arrows to be honest. The limited time I've had with this ship, just pure missile saturation. Um, a lot of missiles downrange is always certainly fun to watch. Shields, we get a size 3 Akura, um, which is the stock one. I would probably go for the FR-86. I think, um, or maybe an industrial one. Um, industrials have some excellent sh um, shields as well. Um, so that would be down to your preference, really. Then we have our two power plants, which are the Daybreaks. Now, this ship requires quite a lot of power, so I would almost certainly swap these for two JS400s to give us a little bit of boost there and help the weapons and power all the onboard systems and all that good stuff. And that would probably mean I'd need to change the coolers, which we get two of, which is size two. I would swap those for snowpacks. Um, some of the best coolers in the game for a ship of this size, in my opinion. Uh, but again, it is tailored to your needs. Um, and you have to think about your passengers and their safety as well. And finally, that brings us on to the stock QT drive, which is the Bolon, which is respectable. Um, I haven't done enough testing with this ship. I haven't had it long enough, haven't played with it long enough to just work out what is best for this particular ship. Obviously, this will be tailored to how the missions for taxi VIP missions actually work and the distances required. So I'm going to sit tight on that for now. Okay, let's move on to the internals of the Phoenix. We will start at the rear of the ship, and here you can see where the snub fighter is docked whether it's an Archimedes and or Merlin we're at the right at the rear of the ship and it's nicely tucked away easy to get in and out and once you get used to the docking mechanism not too bad to get in and out and use these ships once you've figured it out a little bit finicky at first but once you've got it the first time it's kind of like riding a bike you don't really forget then we'll move towards the cockpit area of the ship so this is the second room from the back and as you can see we have some large components here and unfortunately uh, glitched screens which is kind of annoying but it is what it is and then we progress into the magical wonderful world of just luxury and it's very shocking the first time you go into a phoenix compared to its cousins as you can see it's got a nice wooden floor some posh steps the lighting in here is excellent um, really does breathe some new fresh air into the constellation chassis as a whole and then we come to the hot tub area and then we have a bedroom and the set of star citizen live right at the end there and you'll notice there's some subtle differences like we have more windows and a sunroof if you could call it that letting more light in so your passengers are going to be able to see more it's just a whole new ship in terms of luxury and it really does look very comfortable and chill in this ship uh, excellent view for your passengers your vips they're all going to be extremely comfortable i can't see too many complaints um internally in terms of comfort so it will be interesting to see how the taxi missions the vip missions work how they will score you is it going to be comfort or is it time um or is it a combination of both um it will be quite an interesting game loop I wonder how much we'll get paid you know it's a lot to look forward to in something that I feel will be a very relaxing game loop to exploit within the verse without constantly having to do combat without you know it's essentially cargo running in luxury but your cargo are people or aliens or all manner of things so it's something that intrigues me um, and this ship just looks great. We have a dining area, the bar area here. And then we have some sort of really, really luxurious bar stocks here. With all different manner of liquor and all that good stuff. Um, so you can have a drink on your voyage. Well, not you. You're the pilot. But your passengers can at least let their hair down and have a good time at this bar. While hosting Star Citizen Live or inside Star Citizen. So that's the way to look at it. Then we have this sort of classic area of seats here, like a first class seat system that you'd find on a 
um, modern jet today, like a jumbo jet or something like that, first class. So it's a very unique area to the ship, sort of like a waiting lounge. Maybe there's a queue at the bar, who knows, but it's very, very nice. Um, lovely interior, this ship, absolutely exquisite in its detail. And then we'll move on to another bedroom, which has its own fish tank. I mean, that's pretty cool. Who doesn't want that? We then leave the life of luxury and begin to enter part of the ship that we are a little bit more familiar with, with that of the other constellations. We are on the neck of the ship, and here you can see the four bunks for the crew, which also double up as escape pods. Um, there are no escape pods for your passengers and your VIPs. So just be aware of who you're going to delegate to get out. Um, moving on, we still have our lockers, our weapon stowage systems there. We have the table that doesn't operate and, of course, the airlock to get in and out the ship. Um, two points of entry, one being the cargo ramp and, of course, this airlock here. It's not the most comfortable looking area for you and your crew, but it's not an issue because when the ship's empty, you can guarantee that most of your crew are going to make their way back to that lovely area of luxury and indulge themselves with a drink or two, I imagine. Um, so it's not really an issue. We have plenty of lockers, plenty of room for weapons in case you get boarded. Um, we have an airlock opposite the airlock on the floor as well, so two ways to escape the ship in an event of emergency or for boarding actions etc and then we come to the classic design of the bridge which is quite honestly timeless in its design it looks incredible um, I really have fond memories of this bridge it brings back a lot of nostalgia especially when I was experiencing the game for the first time I did a lot of missions and exploring and getting to grips with the game all within this wonderful cockpit as you can see we've got the three seat system here which is brilliant pilot sits in the middle two co-pilots maybe one operating shields maybe the other operating missiles maybe a little bit of both a little bit of this a little bit of that um, but it's nice that you can easily crew this ship with your friends and still have a very good time in and around the verse and the stitching on these seats and the buttons, you know you want to press those buttons. I really want to press those buttons, but detail-wise, just amazing. Something that you just can't fault CIGs, their attention to detail. Um, we have the two turrets there, one for the bottom, one for the top. Nice big trip cable um, going across the bottom of the floor there, so that's a nice health and safety issue. Do not let your passengers up here because you're going to get um, hit with an immense amount of legal fees. But that's the interior of the Phoenix. Okay guys, what we'll do now is our physical tour. I like to do this because it gives a sense of scale to the size of the ship. We'll have a look on the outside and we'll go inside as well. While we do that, let's go over some of the specifications. So the Roll is a touring ship, has a crew of 3 to 4. It holds 96 SCU of cargo. It has a docked P72 Archimedes. To buy this ship in game will cost you 5,658,800 Alpha UEC. To rent, for three days is 424,000. To rent for 30 days is 2.5 million. To rent for one day is 169,000. And to rent for seven days is 792,000. It has a length of 63.5, a width of 27.75, a height of 15.25. Its combat speed is 144 meters per second, and its maximum speed is 911 meters per second, and has a mass. 427,001 kilogram and it was introduced in 2712 so it's 241 years ago that they started producing the Phoenix so we've arrived at the rear of the ship where you can see the Archimedes is nicely tucked away there a very nice cradle it seems to hang on and get docked to the rear of the Phoenix and the other constellations that have them the Taurus doesn't off the top of my head but the Aquila and the Andromeda do i believe then we have these awesome engine nacelles a complicated landing system the landing gear are sort of split into small landing feet i would say then we have another weapon system located by the nacelle then we have a main point of entry here which is going to be the elevator now you do have to be careful as i've said when landing this ship it does have a tendency to tilt forward and you might smack the chin of the cockpit into the ground I've done it numerous times now we'll hop in and go up I wish there was a dedicated button on this elevator I'm sure when the ship gets the gold pass a lot of these things will come to fruition and we'll go straight into the cockpit as you can see 
plenty of room in here for three people and your turret gunners. We have the lower turret here, um, which is fairly easy to get into, and the top one. Now, the lower turret used to kill me all the time, um, and I'm not sure if they still do. I think they've been fixed, but there was a point when getting in these turrets, they would expel you into the big black and you would suffocate if you weren't wearing a helmet. Those are good times. For me, I find that as character building. But turrets, very basic, very easy, good visibility, good range of motion. Uh, the top turret doesn't really have tremendous gun depression. You really will be relying on that lower turret to deal with all that um, threats from the ground side up. But other than that, it's a very functional, easy to read MFD two badgers going at it as we know turrets got buffed recently for their dps as they try and push multi-crew to the forefront um so turrets even though they're size two will still do a ridiculous amount of dps no real complaints in here the visibility is fine and that animation of getting out is pretty quick this is the terrifying bit we made it we made it with such heroes and then we have the bottom turret do I dare get in there? I'm very dubious about this. We're going to go for it. Well, it looks like we're in okay and unscathed. A bit more of a slower animation than the top turret, but we're in. And as you can see, for some reason, my character shaders have just gone pitch black. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's not that dark in here. It's just a little bug, which we'll gloss over. But it's the same concept as the one above. Um, this will give you all the depression you need and a little bit more protection if anyone is trying to attack you from the underside of the ship and we made it out so that's been fixed good because I was very nervous about being swallowed alive by the turrets and then we come to the cockpit area bridge area of the ship and it's very roomy in here we have the two co-pilot seats we'll get in the pilot seat very nice animation love this chair spinning round that's cool and then it sort of adjusts itself and then you're strapped in now the mfds on the constellations are absolutely superb very easy to read so many mfds the visibility although the struts have been complaints of this ship in the past you soon get over it. it's not really that much of an issue but the mfd layout is superb everything you could possibly need is right in front of you um I have absolutely no quibbles whatsoever with the design layout of the MFDs on the Constellation um, Phoenix. In fact, all of the Constellations have this excellent MFD system with the typical sort of blue colouring and of obviously these amazing buttons um, that have functions. All of them are brilliant and it is one of the better cockpit layouts for a ship of this size in my opinion. So, very nice here. Really nothing to complain about. I actually even like the colour, you know. The colour, that sort of... We have blue and like a lighter blue mixed in. It's nice. Excellent stuff. So we'll hop out. And make our way through the rest of the ship. So we'll go through the neck first. So this is an area that we're all familiar with. We have our locker. Uh... Not locker, toilet, shoilet. Then we have our, there's our lockers here. Numerous lockers for the crew. We have the airlock, which is where the elevator is located. We have the table that still refuses to work. Please work, because, I mean, it's really not that much of an issue. Like I said, I think when the ship is empty, most of your crew, if you're running multi-crew, are going to disappear to the luxury area. You're not going to see them. And when it's time for duty, they're more than likely going to be a little bit um, tipsy, I would have thought. Then we have the bunks, so we can log out, which is excellent. And they do double up as escape pods, which is very important, um, especially for your crew. The question is, how valuable is the VIP on your ship? Is he or her, or the species that you're carrying, worth more than your crew? Then we have a bed, it's isolated with a nice fish tank, a little bit basic in there. Then we have these sort of first class area seating arrangement, um, where I imagine you might have people waiting on you if you are a passenger and or VIP. But this sort of levitating table 
which looks amazing, and the view is hands down the best of any constellation I've been on yet. Um, look at the landscape that we're on, guys. It's awesome. Then we have the bar, which again, marbling, little cigar there, some sinks. Um, it's a good place to be. It's a very pleasant area of the ship. You can see a lot of role play happening here, a lot of shenanigans. We have card decks on the table, another TV, and then we come through. There's another fish tank here. This is the uh, hot tub area with its own lights. And this sort of stencil design. There's some panels and things here that I couldn't get to operate. Which is annoying. I have no doubt that when the gold pass happens, these will function. There we go. Some components in there. Tucked away. Just couldn't get that one to open. That's awesome. Really, really cool. Even the lights on the door frame there are incredible. I like lights. They add atmosphere. And this ship has tons of it. It's own persona. And in the fish tank there, you'll notice there's a broken up phoenix. Not sure I'd want that. Um, on display if I was a passenger and saw that that's like getting onto a 747 and there's a picture of it with its wings missing um, so I don't know what genius put that in there I don't think that's really a good idea another bedroom here very luxurious and look at the stitching on the quilt the details that CRG go to is just next level man it's crazy lovely lovely place to sit very nicely lit and then we make our way towards the rear of the ship. Another component bay here. Easy to get to for engineers. Which is good. And resource management will also be interesting on this ship. That will be very important for the missions. For VIPs and taxiing, I believe. Because you don't want to get the temperature too high or too low. And you don't accidentally want to starve your passengers of oxygen. Uh, so we have more components, shields and good stuff here. And then of course we reach the rear of the ship, which is where we find the Archimedes and or Merlin, depending on which one you decided to bring along. And you can hop in. Let's pretend we're in space and then de-dock and off we go. A little bit of defense, a little bit of scouting, mini exploration, whatever it is that tickles your pickle. The Archimedes is there to get the job done and it is an awesome addition. Not to mention that we get a rover with this ship as well. So, quite the package. If it wasn't for those glitched um, TV screens there that we'll gloss over, we'll just pretend we've got no signal. The Phoenix is absolutely phenomenal. So there we go, guys. That was my video on the Constellation Phoenix. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, you know what buttons to press. And I, of course, will have more Star Citizen content en route to your location very soon. Take care. Thanks. Cheers.